All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone. We're so excited for our webinar, Top Tips and Tricks for Donor Engagement and Management. My name is Lisa Gelfrin. I am the Marketing Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'm ex so excited to have Josh Garcia, um, our Fundraising Development Specialist here, um, who will be leading the webinar. Uh, before we get into all about fundraising engagement and management, just a couple of housekeeping uh, things. So if you have a question, uh, please utilize the uh, questions tool in your uh, Zoom panel. Uh, that's the easiest way for us to catch any questions that come in. I'll be monitoring the chat just in case, but that's the best way for us to see any questions that do come in. And um, Josh will try to answer questions as we go through, and we'll also have some time at the end for questions as well. All right, so just a little background of Mighty Cause for those of you who are new to Mighty Cause, maybe aren't as familiar. We've been in the nonprofit fundraising space for quite a long time, since 2006. Uh, so we are an all-in-one fundraising platform, which Josh will talk about in a, in a little bit. Uh, so we've built a platform uh, catered for you guys. Um, it's meant to make your lives easier and have a place where you can do your fundraising and your donor management all in one place. So our platform encompasses a lot of different tools available to you like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, integrations with Salesforce, HubSpot, MailChimp, um, donor management system, et cetera. So Josh will talk a little bit about that, but just some context about who we are and what we do. Um, so I'm gonna just pass it over to Josh. And he will take the reins. Hello, everyone. Really glad to uh, uh, talk with everybody here today. Um, as I mentioned, or as uh, Lisa introduced me, my name is Josh Garcia. I am a fundraising development specialist here at Mighty Cause. I have been uh, with uh, or in this uh, fundraising space uh, for about a decade now, um, working with nonprofits of various sizes uh, from the organizations that are all volunteer um, up to organizations that work on a national level. Um, what I uh, am going to do today is just walk us through some best practices around uh, fundraising, particularly focused on donor engagement. Uh, as a lot of you know, uh, once you receive an individual donor, uh, the work is not done. Uh, a lot of the work now will be focused on us uh, to be able to engage those donors and steward them properly so that they are longtime givers. So I'm going to here, share my screen and walk us through sorry, our presentation. So some of the things that we're going to cover here today will be donor engagement basics. So going over uh, just donor engagement 101, uh, how we focus on donor retention, um, so how we maintain these donors. Uh, utilizing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so ways that we can leverage our existing donors to be more actively involved in some of the fundraising efforts and also recruit other donors uh, that will then focus on engaging and stewarding, um, as well as the benefits of investing in a donor management software and how that helps with everything that we cover through one, two, three. So donor engagement basics. What is donor engagement? It is the continuous cycle of how we are communicating and building relationships with donors. Uh, an individual donor first comes to us through an ask, whether that was through us directly asking them, them coming across our website, or finding us on another website, or maybe a friend or family member uh, sharing the information of the organization. Someone asked for them to make a donation. That's where the relationship begins but that is certainly not where it ends. With every single ask and donation, followed with a thank you. Now, some people feel in that cycle of ask, thank you, ask, thank you, but it's really important that we are continuing to engage with our donors and report to them what we're doing with those donations so they understand the impact that they make. At that point, after they've been properly thanked, and they have a good understanding of who we are and what we're doing with their donations, that's when we build that trust and relationship to feel comfortable to start the cycle again. 
Engaged donors are retained donors. So better engagement equals better retention. Donor engagement is key to donor retention. The average reason, the number one reason that individual donors who are not retained from an organization, meaning they donated in one calendar year and not the next, the number one reason in 2023 that they were not retained is because no one asked them to follow back up. So we want to continue to build those relationships. That's what leads to them giving again. That's what leads to them giving on a more consistent basis. Retained donors consequentially have a higher lifetime value to your nonprofit. An individual donor, a retained donor, over the course of their donor life cycle, meaning as long as they're going to continue giving to that organization, a retained donor is 10 times more cost-effective than a one-time individual donor. So think about the amount of dollars that we're leaving on the table simply by taking that one-time gift for granted and not continuing to build relationships with them. This also allows you to increase the amount that you raise. So when donors are engaged, your nonprofits can work to increase the size of their gifts. Increasing the size of their gifts, retaining donors, and engaging your donors is what allows you to be able to uh, continue to increase your nonprofit's overall revenue. What we think about here is sustainability. And this can actually touch upon things like grants outside of individual giving. When you're going through the grant application process, grantors want to understand the sustainability of your organization before they distribute those grants to you. So they're going to take a look at things like your recurring revenue from individual donors, your overall donor base, how many of those donors are retained year over year. Getting donors engaged in more areas of your nonprofit to get their long-term support and investment comes in a lot of different ways. So some things that we can start to think about doing. Letting them know about what are some of the ways uh, that you're impact or making an impact with your gift. When someone donates to, let's use an animal rescue for an organization. And that animal rescue follows up and says, thank you so much for your gift of $250. Your gift fed 10 animals last month. What that donor sees and feels is that they were the ones who made that impact. Consequentially, what they're viewing their gift as is that they fed 10 animals and the rescue is essentially a vehicle through which they made that impact. Helping build that sort of understanding and connection with the donors motivates them to continue to give because the main benefit of any sort of gift is the reward that they feel for helping that community or that mission that they care about. So it's very critical if we want donors to continue to give that we're differentiating ourselves from other nonprofits out there by helping them understand the impact of that gift. What's also really important, I talk to a lot of organizations and they'll ask me about major gift givers. Uh, for example, some organizations might be looking for like wealth engine screening or something that's gonna identify who are those major gift givers. But that is not how major gift givers start. Major gift givers, even those capable of giving large amounts, five, six figures, even those that are currently giving those to other organizations, they continue to look and scout for other nonprofits that they want to help support, but they don't start off with those large gifts. And this is actually something that I've spoken with major gift givers before. They very frequently will test an organization with a small one-time gift and take a moment to look at how does that organization respond? Do they receive a thank you? Do they tell them about the continued work that they're doing? Do they invite them to engage in other ways? Are they inviting them to events? Are they sharing their newsletter? Are they continuing to give impact reports? Or is it simply they got the gift, they sent a receipt, they moved on, and then they asked a little bit later? So when we're thinking about our donor base, we have our current list of donors, the people that are reliable supporters, but we need to be thinking about how we're replenishing those. And how we're doing so is by building strong, long-lasting relationships. Wanted to just take a quick pause here and was going to look at the uh, the chat question um, or chats. Doesn't look like there's any immediate questions. But if anyone does have any initial questions, 
please let me know. Please feel free to drop them in the chat. Now, when we're thinking about engaged donors, engaged donors, retained donors, or more likely to be recurring gift givers. So last year, one of the things that we saw is that about 50% of individual donors in 2023 were actually a part of a recurring gift giving program. So when you're looking at your donor base and seeing how many recurring donors that you have, be aware that the individual donor base across the US more than half of them are signing up to give on a recurring basis in some capacity. And the overwhelming majority of that, over 80%, are individuals who are giving on a monthly basis. Now, what does that look like in terms of dollars? The average one-time gift is $115. So $115, one-time gift, that's a $115 gift. A $24 gift is the average monthly gift. That's $288. So when we're looking at that difference, that is $173 per year. So a thing that we can do, and this is a good exercise I encourage everybody uh, to take a look at, is take a look at your donor base last year. Take a look at 2023 donors and see how many of those individuals were one-time gifts and how many were recurring gifts. And then take a look at, if we looked at just 50% of those gifts last year were recurring gifts of $24 a month, what is the difference in terms of revenue that we're missing out on? Again, sustainability is really key when we're thinking about grants, when we're looking to get into projects, when we're looking at loans. That kind of sustainability, that predictable revenue is what's going to allow us to get better access to more opportunities. It's going to allow us to be more ambitious with some of the projects that we take on. Ongoing support reduces your nonprofit's fundraising costs. A lot of monthly donors like to consider it very much a set in, forget it type thing. They want to be able to support this organization. They understand how much they can afford to, and there's an ease to it. So we don't have to constantly work to re-engage these individuals because they're already engaged. We continue to thank them. We give them their average uh, updates. We continue to let them know before we have to make those concrete asks. Stewardship also leads to other opportunities. As I mentioned, major gift givers aren't born overnight. But somebody who's been consistently giving $25 a month over the past three years is somebody that's worth having a conversation with about other ways that they can help support the organization. Maybe major gifts, maybe bequests, maybe they're interested in becoming a board member, maybe they're interested in volunteer opportunities, maybe they're interested in recruiting other individuals via peer to peer. But those are the people that we've built strong relationships with. What you really need to think about a recurring donor as is someone who's investing in your work. They've raised their hand and said that they're ready, willing, and able to support your organization by investing on a consistent basis. And we need to return that favor by both showing them the sort of love and appreciation for that, and then also continuing to build and expand that relationship based on them raising their hand. So here's what you need to run a recurring giving program. The ability to allow donors to set up a monthly recurring donation. And they can do this on the Mighty Cause donation page. So I'll give you a quick example. Whoops. Sorry. Might get rid of that bar. Apologies. So we're taking a look at a website for one of the nonprofits using Mighty Cause. This is Dylan's Wings of Change. When I click on their donate icon, it takes me to their Mighty Cause donation page. You'll immediately see here the opportunity for a monthly donation. And what you see here, as I was mentioning before, context on that gift. A $50 a month gift is the equivalent of funding a student to attend one of their workshops. 
So $50 a month, that's $600 over the course of the year. And maybe their donors, a lot of them, aren't able to give a one-time $600 gift. But seeing this, this context, $50 a month is something that's a lot more easy to be able to budget for. And if you're somebody that really believes in Dylan's Wings to change his mission, and you want to be providing the impact of an individual student being able to attend this workshop, workshop on a monthly basis, we give you that opportunity to be able to do so, and they see the context around this. So it's very simple. I also recommend having monthly as your default option. That is a best practice uh, in the online giving community. Have monthly as the default option. They can always click right here to move to that one-time gift. Another thing that you'll note here, multiple payment methods. Mighty Cause allows credit card, PayPal, Venmo, Google Pay, bank account transfer, ACH, as well as Apple Pay. Each additional payment method that you provide for a donor increases the conversion rate by about 2.7%. Another thing that we wanna do with our monthly donors is we wanna be able to look at who we want to ask for a monthly gift. So I'll give you a real life example of an organization that I've worked with. It was a shelter for unhoused members of their community and they wanted to grow the recurring giving. So what they can do using a tool like Mighty Cause or your existing CRM is go to their donation reports. Let's take a look at the last 12 months and identify everybody who gave at least 100, but no more than $250. So you can see here, that was 211 donations in that amount. What we're gonna do now is use this list of individuals, and you can see these are off-time, one-time gifts. And we're gonna ask strategically for $25 a month. $25 a month is going to equate to $300 over the course of the year. So we're not asking for a major leap forward. We're taking people and steering them just up 50 to $200 over the course of a full year. And we're gonna give them context and we're gonna work a thank you in there. So this is how this organization structured it. They would say, We'll use Bob here as an example. Their message to Bob will say, Dear Bob, thank you so much for your gift of $200 on May 10th. Your donation provided eight members of your community with their first night of stay at our home. In 2024, the number of in-house individuals is increasing, and our work is more important for our community than ever to provide safety for all the members of our community. A gift of just $25 a month would mean that every month you would be responsible for another member of the community's first night of safety and shelter at our home. Please click here to donate today. It takes them to the monthly donation page with the suggested asks and those impact statements that I described. What that organization saw in their first year was a 189% increase in individual donations. And what I think is particularly powerful about that is that it was based predominantly on their existing donor base. But it wasn't simply going out and finding a new major gift giver or finding a major grant. It was taking the people who had already demonstrated, raised their hands that they want to support the organization, thanking them, helping them understand the impact of their gift, and giving them a reason why you're asking for that specific sustainable amount. Now, it isn't simply just making that one-time ask, as I mentioned, it's a full donor life cycle. So we need to make a plan to check in and engage with these donors in your work throughout the year. Last year, the average nonprofit actually sent out about 60 emails per recipient. 48% of donors actually said that regular donor or email engagement inspired them to give on a recurring basis. Now, of course, we don't want to inundate our donors, which is why we want to have a healthy balance of things like newsletters, thank yous, asks. But I guarantee you, if you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on this webinar and you're asking yourself, am I emailing or messaging my donors too frequently? 
you're certainly not. I would actually recommend and encourage every organization to take a look at how many appeals you sent last year and add at least two. Then we need to make sure that we are recognizing and thanking our sustainable donors. So that's another thing that the CRM can help us identify. As I showed you how we can look at different giving amounts that can allow us to identify different donors, also pull up our, giving do our recurring donors and send out more targeted communications. Segmented emails, meaning that we send it to a specific group of donors and not a mass message, has an 82% open rate higher than those of non-segmented emails. So think about how that's kind of cutting through all the cloud of messages that are going out there from other organizations and allowing you to be the focal point of their engagement. Hey, Josh, we have two questions related to recurring giving. Sure. Uh, so one of them is uh, we had a donor who accidentally chose the monthly uh, do monthly recurring option because it was set to default and they disputed it. Do you um, have any tips in terms of if that situation occurs or how do you communicate um, clearly the option that donors can choose? Sure. So, of course, uh, those sorts of accidents will, be, will happen. As I mentioned, I've been in uh, this fundraising space for about a decade, and you would be shocked how many people select the wrong amount, uh, accidentally add an extra zero uh, when they didn't mean to, um, select an option that they didn't mean to. Uh, with platforms like a Mighty Cause, for example, we actually make it really easy for them to be able um, to have those sorts of issues immediately resolved. Uh, recurring donors and any best practice of a recurring giving online program uh, will allow them to be able to create an account which will allow them to be able to make those edits and changes right away. Uh, Mighty Cause also offers, and many best practice organizations um, will offer uh, customer support for donors as well uh, to be able to rectify those sorts of situations. You as an organization, what you wanna do is be as you would in any other uh, situation in your life in which you know an accident or uh, a mistake has happened, is just be open and apologetic and just, say, we're really sorry for that experience. Um, here's avenues through the platform that you can uh, take to have those rectified, but we're also happy to help with that as well. Uh, and just let them know that you appreciate their support. Uh, so it sounds like they were looking to give, you know, a certain amount, um, accidentally chose monthly. Just follow up with, thank you so much for that gift, uh, you know, the intended gift of $100. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll make sure uh, we'll work with our platform to make sure that this is uh, um, that any sort of recurring gift giving is going to be canceled. If there were any sort of uh, refunds necessary, we'll work towards that. Uh, and also, thank you so much for your hundred dollar gift. This is what we're going to do with it, and we really do appreciate you. Just being open and open and honest and communicating with them is going to go a long way. Yeah, and just anecdotally, I've seen what's been really effective is also if you are having a dedicated monthly um, campaign or recurring campaign on your website is at the top of your donation form of just reinforcing that language of, you know, support us monthly and also reinforcing those like donation levels as Josh showed with that example organization of what a donor is supporting on a monthly basis for your organization because that will also drive home the impact of the gift that they're going to make. Um, just another question about recurring uh, gifts. Um, so, um, uh, sorry, uh, what, is, so actually this is just, uh, could you just uh, explain briefly what is exactly a segmented email or how do you segment emails? Great question. So a segmented email means, let's say we have a contact base of a thousand of a thousand contacts. A segmented email is going to reach out to a very specific group. So it means that we're not sending it to all 1,000. We're not replying all. We're identifying the group that we want to message. So I can actually show this in the Mighty Cause system, for example. In the Mighty Cause system, we're able to have a tab that tracks all of our supporters here. So as you can see, we have over 2,700 contact records being managed within this database. 
But let's say I want to reach out to a specific group, maybe people that I've identified as my major donors. So again, I might go over to, as I showed you before, to our donation reports and identify everybody that's given over a certain level. Major gift giving can mean different things to different organizations based on your uh, expectations and goals and giving levels. But let's say just to pick a you know round number, everyone that gave over $1,000 last year is a major donor. And I want to send out a target message just to those individuals to invite them to a selective uh, event to thank them for their gifts. We can use a system like this to identify our major donors and email them directly. So you see, we took that list of 272 or 2,722 individuals. And now we're going to email those 16 individuals. So that's an example of a segmented email. I also saw another question in the chat. Um, someone who had been giving on a, a recurring basis of $100 a month um, who has... Uh, who canceled their hundred dollar and how to approach that. So that's a really great question. Um, and the answer is to be curious and to be very, again, appreciative of the gifts that they've given. For a lot of individuals, you know, it could be anything. It could be new financial constraints. Um, it could be uh, a reason maybe there was something, uh, you know, small misunderstanding. Uh, maybe there's another organization that they decide, decided to shift their uh, donations towards. But we're not going to be able to address it unless we don't understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach out. If you have a phone number, I would reach out to them by phone. Um, if not, I would send them an email and I would thank them for the recurring gifts and ask, uh, you know, thank you so much for your gifts. Uh, your $100 a gift has uh, $100 a month has been helping us with X, Y, and Z. Uh, you've made a great impact and we're really grateful. Uh, support like yours makes our mission possible. Um, I do understand that you're not, or you are not continuing uh, with your $100 a month gift. Any feedback would be appreciated to help us to make sure that we're being rightful stewards to you as a donor. And that's what's going to give them the opportunity to explain why. With a lot of best in practice tools, you know, if there is something that's like a financial constraint, you can give them the opportunity to pause or to push out their date so they can via their account or you can also on the back end. Uh, maybe they say, you know what, uh, I'm saving up for a wedding. And uh, so, for example, uh, my wife and I just celebrated our one year anniversary. Uh, we definitely kind of tighten our belt <laughs> leading into the months prior to the wedding. Um, so maybe they're saying, hey, you know, I'm, we're actually saving up for a wedding um, in six months. So we're uh, kind of cutting back on a lot of our expenses. I really love the work that you're doing, uh, but it's something that I just need to hold off on for the time being. You could say, not a problem. We can actually pause that uh, up for eight months. Um, are you anticipating refollowing up with the gifts uh, a few months afterwards? Oh yeah, of course. We're just looking to save in the next six months. Then you can push it forward. Or as I mentioned, maybe they say, um, there's another organization that I've gotten involved with. That's an opportunity to understand what did they, what was the reason why? Is there anything that they're doing that you really enjoyed? We love to uh, make sure that we're also providing best practice. If there's something that uh, they're doing that you really love, I'm sure that our other donors would love it if we had the opportunity to replicate that as well. But again, just being curious and being appreciative for their gift is a great way to approach the conversation. I'm going to jump back into uh, the um, PowerPoint, but I am going to pause. So any other questions, we will be returning to those. So one of the things that we just discussed, making a targeted ask fee email. Ask everyone who gave $120 or less last year to donate $10 a month. For just $25 a month, your gift would provide this sort of impact. There has to be a reason why for the ask. Just asking for $25 a month doesn't necessarily make sense. But asking $25 a month is going to help with X, Y, and Z. That's what's going to give context. 
think about it just when you're purchasing. <laughs> if uh, Netflix just emailed you and said, hey, purchase Netflix for $20 a month. You would say, why? <laughs> If you said, hey, we just recently expanded uh, our categories and selections. Netflix now offers the most amount of movies of anyone on the internet for just $20 a month. You'll have unlimited access to these movies. If you're a movie lover, you'd say, you know what? That sounds like a great deal. But you have to give them that sort of context for the ask. Otherwise, it's just a blank ask. And it's not resonating with the individual donors because they're getting asked from other nonprofits as well. So it's important that we're standing out amongst the group. Asking for a recurring donation after you've got a one-time donation. So again, we shouldn't ever feel afraid to ask. Any organization, no matter how many asks a year they're making, I also promise you that it's not too much. But what's always important as well, as I mentioned before, is that we're not going from ask to ask. It is not asking for a donation. And the next thing that they hear is asking for a donation. It is about building a relationship. So we follow up with a thank you. We share the impact of their gift. We give them an updated thank you on their uh, impact. We can invite them to other ways to engage us, volunteer opportunities, our newsletter, events that are coming up. And then we follow up with that specific ask. You gave X amount. We really appreciate it. It made X, Y, and Z possible for us. Would you consider a donation of X amount a month, which would allow us to do X, Y, and Z moving forward? And here's an easy option to do so, a simple donation page with basic instructions. Now, not providing a quality thank you is the way that you're killing your follow-up donations. 92% of donors in 2023 surveyed said that the thank you is the most important message that they receive from their donors. And over 60% said that they prefer email as their uh, form of uh, thank yous. When donors don't feel appreciated, they don't come back. As I mentioned, major gift givers will test organizations with small gifts to see what sort of efforts and relationship building they'll make before they decide how to build a relationship with you moving forward. So when you're not giving proper thank yous, where you're not using opportunities to build a relationship with your donors, you're forfeiting future donations. You're costing yourself future donations. And as it says here, you end up chasing your tail. I mentioned that engaged donors, retained donors, are 10 times more cost-effective over the course of their lifetime than those one-time gift givers. A lot of the organizations that are probably on this uh, call today, I'm sure that time is not something that's a commodity for you. I'm sure a lot of you are all volunteer or maybe have small staffs and time is something that's really important. So think about how much time you're spending sending out blanket mass emails to everybody, sending out repeated asks over and over, trying to find new donors to come in and take your place when you're churning your donations, rather than focusing what time and effort you do have into fundraising on building sustainable, long-lasting relationships with your existing donors. I mentioned that organization that I worked with who saw a 189% increase in their first year having a targeted recurring donation uh, campaign. That was an extremely high ROI for them in terms of taking their existing donor base and strategically engaging them and building with them to have that large increase in donations rather than trying to find 189% new donors to uh, fill that void. So what we want to think about is it's an ongoing relationship. It's like any other relationship in your life. Friends, uh, family, they want to hear from you. They want to understand what's going on with you. Uh, they want to be appreciated for the efforts that they do to support you. So don't just think of it as something that's transactional. These are the individuals that are making your work possible. Failure to steward is failure to grow. Relying on one-time donations means that we're just kind of in that cycle. We're circling. We're not moving forward. And again, donors want more than just a receipt. 
think about those thank yous and think about ways to have follow-up thank yous. You know, a best practice is maybe once a month, look into your donor management system. I showed you how we can segment by different uh, donation amounts and see, hey, who's everybody that gave between $250 and $500 in the last month? What kind of thank you do I want to have as a follow-up to them? Who's everybody that gave $1,000 last year? What are ways that I want to let them know that I really appreciate that? So create a plan. Have an onboarding plan. Do you have an onboarding plan right now? Do you look into your donor management system and identify who are people that have given for the first time? Mighty Cause has an automated message system that allows you using one of our templates to craft an automated email that goes out to individuals who are first time donors. So that's a first step. That's a follow up. Thank you from their initial. Thank you. Then are we following up with like a phone call with a welcome packet? We inviting them to join our newsletter. What are we doing? If we don't have a donor management system, are we tracking that at all in our spreadsheets? Then have a plan for regular communications. Put out a plan before each quarter. That should include a things like newsletters, things like thank yous, things like appeals, things like check-ins and status updates. And at the end of each year, create an annual report. Let's look at our donor retention. One thing that we one thing we can do in the Mighty Cause system is we can go to retention right here. And I can see where am I retained? Where am I not retained? These are three individuals who, as you can see here have given over $400 that are not retained, that we're not following up with. Let's reach out to them. Let's thank them for their gift. Let's let them know about what's new going on in our organization. So these are the sorts of things that we should be looking at on a regular basis to make sure that we aren't letting opportunities slip through the cracks. A lot of our communications should be considered thank yous. Thank yous don't have to even just be a direct individual thank you. We want to have those, of course. Those are incredibly important. I mentioned 92% of donors consider those their most important message. But think about ways to include that in other messages. General status updates, newsletters, things like because of you, with your help. Use that on our website, in our newsletters, in our emails. Come up with ways to recognize your donor. Donor of the month, donor spotlight. These sorts of creative aspects, again, are going to help us stand out in the crowd to best engage with our audience. So when they're thinking of their next donation, we're who comes to mind. So focusing on retention. It's cost effective and efficient. As I mentioned, it's 10 times more cost effective to engage a donor than to find a new one to take their place. The average nonprofit loses 40% of their donors from one year to the next. So think about that sort of those sort of numbers. When we're thinking about growing our donor base, it's impossible if we're not retaining our donor base. If we're not retaining our donor base, if we're losing 40% per year, again, we're chasing our tail. And retained donors are people invested in your organization. Those are people who can become fundraisers, volunteers, ambassadors, board members. So let's set goals for ourselves. Now, I mentioned, you know, the average organization is retaining 60%. Take a look at your numbers. Do you have an ability to be able to have insight into those numbers? How much of our donors are retained year over year? What percent of our budget comes from those retained donors? What percentage comes from our monthly donors? Set a goal for yourself and think about how much more revenue, how much our budget would increase if we retained 10% more donors and converted 10% more into monthly donors. 
Tailor your communications to different segments. Again, as I shared, a segmented email has an 82% higher open rate. Segmented campaigns receive 760% more revenue than a mass email. So if we don't have a way to be able to segment and reach out to individual uh, groups of donors, we're leaving a lot of money on the table. And again, put your beneficiaries front and center. Your gift made this possible. Tell stories. Share updates whenever possible so that it's real to them and that you're not just an organization asking for dollars. Your $25 donation transformed a child's school year by providing with a brand new backpack. With your help, we provided 1,000 backpacks to students uh, in need last year. Use our retention reports. If you don't have a system in place, identify a way that you can, but it's really important to have a system in place that's gonna allow you to be able to pull this sort of data easily. Shifting through spreadsheets and records can be very time consuming. And again, we're thinking about how can we do this efficiently and effectively? So if we can quickly identify our numbers and identify who we need to be following up with, that's gonna allow us to be more efficient and effective with our time. Wanted to take a quick pause here um, for some follow-up questions. Uh, was there, uh, Lisa, were there any follow-up questions? Yes, uh, there was a question regarding um, migration from Network for Good, or how does that work when you're migrating from another platform to Mighty Cause? Sure. Uh, so making a migration over from one platform to the next, a couple of things that you just want to keep in mind. As a best practice, you're going to want some overlap between, you're going to want some overlap between uh, the two systems. Uh, a best practice is at least three months. Um, I would generally advise you at a minimum to have a 30 day overlap, but the benefit is that you're going to have access to both platforms at the same time. So you can reconcile the data between the two, uh, with most existing platforms, what you're going to do is you're going to export that, uh, information as a flat CSV file. And one of the benefits of still having access to that organization is you'll also have access to their support. If you need any help with downloading that sort of information. Uh, Mighty Cause has a step-by-step -step guide for import process, as well as a live support team um, for help. Um, we'll provide you with a template uh, for what you'll need for import. Um, so this is going to allow you to be able to understand the data that you're going to need to pull from your existing system uh, to bring it over. Then moving forward, uh, you know, on any platform, but for example, the Mighty Cause, uh, once you bring in and reconcile those systems, uh, you'll be able to, as people make donations in the future through a Mighty Cause platform, it'll automatically create and update supporter profiles moving forward. I also saw somebody ask if there will be um, a recording uh, sent out afterwards. And yes, you'll be able to get access to uh, these materials after um, the uh, webinar, usually about 24 hours. Um, so check uh, tomorrow or Monday, the latest, uh, for recording. So next thing I'd like to touch on is peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is something that I'm a big, I've been a big proponent on for a long time. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages their existing supporters to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser on their behalf. So an example of this is when you've seen, very common, a Facebook fundraiser. If someone's raising funds for a nonprofit on their birthday, that's an example of a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Now, with the Facebook donations, there could be some limits. It's typically limited to about 24 hours. And also for the nonprofit, uh, they often do not get to see who donated. Uh, so those donations usually are received about nine weeks later. Uh, to the nonprofit, and there's usually not a donor list of who made those donations. Uh, so leveraging a more dedicated peer-to-peer -peer campaign, uh, like a Mighty Cause, for example, or other platforms that are out there, uh, will allow your donors to do this anytime over the course of the year. You can set up how long they can have it. It can continue to be ongoing. And it allows them to share it through multiple platforms, not just Facebook. And you as an organization are going to receive the data right away. 
Donors are three times more likely to donate if they're asked by someone they know rather than the organization itself. And the average donor in a peer-to-peer -peer campaign is able to raise 10 times more than they would be able to afford through their own giving. In 2023, 10% of all donors in America ran at least one peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So this is something that is regularly happening out there. What it allows you to do is two things. Number one, those people who are signing up and getting engaged as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, they are demonstrating and becoming investors in your organization. They are taking that next step. They're being ambassadors. They're sharing your mission. They're demonstrating that they would like to put some of their time and effort into doing so. Number two, they're making very warm introductions uh, to organization or to potential donors. So with a mighty cause peer-to-peer -peer campaign, you, the nonprofit, will see everybody who gave to each individual uh, fundraiser. You'll see who they gave to, how much they gave, and they'll be able to receive, as I mentioned, that email message, thanking them as a new uh, gift giver. This allows us to start, as we go back to the beginning of the presentation, start that engagement uh, cycle build that relationship. I always think a really great uh, real life example is that my wife uh, is a board member for a nonprofit uh, that raises funds for Alzheimer's research and how she first came across the organization was years ago, she made a uh, donation to a friend's peer-to-peer -peer page. So those are the types of opportunities and relationships uh, that we're able to build there. There's a lot of different ways. I'll show you one example. Charity walks and marathons, birthday fundraisers, golf tournaments, campaign add-ons. When somebody is making a donation, say if you'd like to increase your impact, here's how you can create a peer-to-peer -peer page and fundraise alongside. Giving events. You know, This uh, Giving Tuesday, uh, we encourage you to share, uh, uh, create a pit fundraiser and share with your friends. Board challenges. Uh, the organization that my wife is involved with, uh, they anticipate and expect board members to get involved in the fundraising efforts. Uh, so they're expected to create a peer-to-peer -peer page and contribute to the fundraising efforts through fundraising just through their own network. So peer-to-peer -peer pages, and with Mighty Cause, what you can do is have a simple uh, template to create up and make it very personalized towards their own fundraising goal. We can also create this in the form of a team. Uh, so maybe for like a marathon, a group of people are going to all run under one team and they're all going to fundraise together. This can create like a sort of fun, uh, you know, friendly competition levels of the fundraising efforts. Uh, the organization that my wife works with, they put on a yearly flag football game. And the two teams uh, create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers with uh, under the team form with each of the team members falling under that team. So they have two competitions. One is the flag football game. One is who can out fundraise the other. It's easy to tie for events. So I'm sure we've seen a lot of fundraisers out there. I'm going to run a 5K. I'm going to run a marathon. Uh, donate to me. Um, my uh, my wife's nephew, uh, his local basketball team had a free throw shooting contest uh, where everyone shot 100 free throws. And they ask people to pledge a certain amount for each free throw that they made. So fun ways to get involved here. These are very common at schools as well. I'll show you an example of one here. I think this is a great example. It's the Wilderness Adventure, a campaign created by the Live Oak Wilderness Camp. This is a campaign to raise camper scholarships for low-income students to attend a week-long uh, camping expedition in the Appalachian Mountains. Here are what they call their quote unquote ambassadors. You can see each of the individuals. People can come here to their page. People can search. We can organize a leaderboard as well. What I want to highlight here, they raised $67,000 on this campaign, which is very impressive. But you see it was from 45 fundraisers who received collectively 462 donations. That's just about 10 donors per person. And the average gift size here 
is a little under $150. So we're not talking about major, major gifts. It was 45 motivated individuals, all committed to finding 10 friends and family members to support their mission of passion, which is providing an outdoor experience for these students that they otherwise wouldn't receive. If we click on a page like Emily's. You'll see very plug and play. We can also provide them as an organization with a simple template. So she can just come in here, add her photo and name and be ready to go. As she continues to fundraise, maybe she wants to adjust her goal. She wants to share this. It's one click to Facebook, one click to Twitter, one click to email. She can also copy and paste this into any other platform that she likes. Those individuals that gave to her page, all are now populating in the supporters tab. We see that we gave to Emily's page. They can receive through our automated emails, an automated thank you message for their first gift. The donor cycle of engagement can start. As I mentioned, we provide very simple templates. So there's not much effort on their part. They're simply gonna log in, make a couple of the options that they need to do so. This also is for you as an organization. We provide templates, not just for the individual donors, but for the organization. And as I mentioned, we have support here at Mighty Cause as well. The last topic here today, kind of bringing this all together is investing in a donor management software. So donor management software, as we've seen, is what's going to allow us to be able to identify who our donors are, who's retained, who's lapsed, who's recurring giving, who's giving at certain amounts, records of communications. It's really important for us to come up with a plan. And then to be able to enact that plan, we have to have the right tools to do so. Donor management software, is meant to simplify and automate those donor engagement relationships. It tracks interactions, donations, allows you to segment donors, those very impactful messages that we discussed, and create personalized communications. The goal of a donor management system is to improve operational efficiency, to track and analyze success, to build targeted donor outreach, to strengthen meaningful relationships, and improve donor engagement. Investing in new software can at times seem intimidating, but honestly, the organizations uh, that I work with here at Mighty Cause are really using this system once or twice a week, checking in regularly just to see who are new donors, where are donations coming from, uh, is there anybody that we should be reaching out to? The example earlier, someone who had been giving $100 a month who isn't continuing, it's really important that we identify that right away and that we reach out and understand why. The supporters tab, as I showed you, allows us to be able to create tags, to create segments, to see who our donors are, to message them directly. The Mighty Cause platform, as you can see here, it's gonna give you robust stats at your fingertips. How many online donations? How many people have come to our page? Donation amounts, recurring giving, highest donations, donor retention trends over time, things that we're, we're trying to build out an action plan. We're going to leverage usable data. If we have lots of spreadsheets, but it's hard to organize and segment and pull information out, that's not really usable data. It's just kind of sitting there. But if I can come in here and I can come in and identify donors giving at a certain level, donors giving at a certain type, people who've fallen off as donor retentions, people who are recurring donors that canceled, this is allowing me, when I have a limited amount of time to focus on fundraising, to be efficient and effective to have this information at my fingertips. The big takeaways from today that I really want everyone to understand, if there's anything to take away from this, it is the first gift from a donor is just the beginning of a relationship. 
And what fosters sustainability and long-term giving is making sure that we reenact or that we engage with those donors, that we thank them, that we share the impact of their gifts, that we are not just waiting for recurring gifts to fall in our lap, but we are being strategic about how we ask for those, that they are not letting donors fall to the wayside by not retaining them, that we have a plan to retain them, that we're finding other ways to engage those donors, whether it's volunteering, peer-to-peer, -peer, recurring giving, being an ambassador, and finally, that we have all the things that we need at our fingertips to do so. So I wanted to pause here. Uh, we have a few minutes left just to ask uh, what other questions um, that I can help answer. As anyone's writing their questions down, um, just as you guys see on the screen, our next webinar on, is on July 25th. It is a platform walkthrough and overview for Giving Tuesday 2024. I know it's July, but fall and Giving Tuesday will be soon around the corner. So uh, please register and join us and we'll walk through the platform and we'll walk through how you can participate in Giving Tuesday. Um, so it looks like we have a question here, Josh, is how does your platform pricing compare to DonorBox? Um, so in terms of our pricing, I would say that we specifically are intended to work with small to medium-sized nonprofits. Um, I think the biggest way that I identify small to medium-sized is mostly about, you know, time and capacity at their disposal. Um, our pricing is meant to reflect that. Uh, I think that our pricing, as I mentioned, I've worked on at all scale of organizations. Um, our pricing is meant to reflect that. Um, I not familiar with donor boxes pricing right off uh, the get-go, um, but you can find our pricing on our website. Uh, they range from a free Mighty Cause uh, page, uh, which is receiving the basics of, you know, the ability to receive donations. Um, if you're looking for some of the tools that we've looked at, like the supporters tab, um, automated email messaging, more in-depth reports, like donor retention and things along those lines, true donor management capabilities, those prices range between $79 a month and $119 a month, uh, which, in my opinion, is extremely uh, competitive in terms of what's available for true donor management systems on the uh, on the market. And feel free if you're just curious and seeing if it makes a fit uh, or <laughs> if it's the right fit, um, there's going to be a survey at the end. And if you're just interested in having a call with us to see if this makes sense for your nonprofit, um, you can say that you're interested in chatting more um, and we'll schedule a call and someone on our team will chat with you and see if it makes sense. I definitely recommend if you are interested having a conversation um, with me or my colleagues. Um, it really is meant to be an informative conversation. Our objective here as fundraising specialists is to make sure that we're pointing you in the right direction. Um, so it really is just a conversation to understand, you know, what do you currently have at your disposal? What are your goals? And is there alignment here? Are there ways that demonstrably Mighty Cause will be able, or a platform like Mighty Cause will be able to do so? And then making a recommendation. As I mentioned, there's multiple plans. Uh, if you have a conversation with someone like myself, uh, typically it's just a 30 minute conversation. We spend about five to 10 minutes where I learn just a little bit more about you. I always try to do a little research on your organization prior to any conversation so that you know, I go to your website, I go to your social media, I learn whatever I can about you, know, you and your mission and the work that you do, um, any initiatives that you're currently highlighting, and then just have a conversation with you where I understand what are your objectives and goals? What are you looking to accomplish? Uh, and then from there, I show you specific examples based on our conversation that I think would be relevant to you and a recommendation on if there's a plan that doesn't align, what that would look like. Um, so don't hesitate for a call like that. It really will be, uh, there's no cost to having a call like that. It's an informational session to learn a little bit more. Awesome. Well, I don't see, is there one more question? Um, okay. So that was it. We are at time. Everyone, I just want to yeah. say thank you so much for taking the time uh, to have a conversation with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, donor engagement is something that things like donor retention and recurring giving are something that I'm very passionate about when it comes to helping smaller organizations, because I think it's the most efficient, effective way to find sustainability. 
Um, so I really appreciate everyone coming here to share the conversation. And if there's anything that I can do to be of help, uh, please let me know. And Lisa, I'll let you uh, wrap it up from there. Yeah, thank you, everyone. As I mentioned, if you are interested in chatting more with Josh or someone else on our team, um, please feel free to uh, just on the survey form, say that you're interested in a call. Um, as well, you can always go to our website and um, fill out a form um, to request a call through there as well. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm so happy this was so helpful for a lot of people. Um, and yes, hopefully we'll see you in the next webinar. Have a great day. Bye.